Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So I've made a couple changes here to the mono white token stack from uh, from yesterday and wanted to give you kind of an update. Um, if it's your first time here visiting my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing or maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For all my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and viewing my videos. I really do appreciate it. Um, for all of my members, I want to thank you guys so much for becoming members and helping to support my channel. And if you would like to become a member, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the um, also right under the banner here for the video so these are both great ways to support the channel I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you so thank you guys so much again for your consideration all right let's get into some games okay so let's jump in so a couple changes here to the deck um, I decided to kind of get rid of some of the removal just because I wanted to make room for some more kind of go wide strategies and I wanted to give the deck um, kind of like a decent end game because um, I felt like that was maybe something that was sort of lacking. And so I decided to put in a full play set here of Virtue of Loyalty, which I think is a really nice just kind of addition to this deck. I also upped the land count here to 23 sources. So uh, minor change, went up to a full play set of Fountain Port which I think is really great helping sort of the whole token strategy, drawing cards, um, etc. And then I went down to three copies of Lupin Flower Village just because there are a couple hands that are a little bit kind of um, problematic if you have like Virtue of Loyalty or Case or Hop to it and you can't cast it um, since this only can spend white mana for creature spells. So. And the upside of this is very marginal. You do get to search the top six cards of your library, but you only have five cards you can hit in four seasoned Warren Guards, which are rabbits, and one Regal Bunicorn. So that's potentially something you could play with with the creature types, um, but it feels pretty good right here. Um, I will say that the one drops I'm really happy with. So um, season Warren Guard is absolutely amazing in this deck. You have so many ways to get tokens into play, that this is basically a 3-2 attacking on turn two, which is just phenomenal. So you have a full play set of Novice Inspector, um, Regal, uh, Resolute Reinforcements, Hop to it, Sanguine Evangelist, Virtue of Loyalty. These all drop tokens for you. You can make them with Fountain Port. Knight Aaron of Eos goes and finds stuff to make tokens. So it's very easy to get this thing going right away. Um, and then the other two one drops that are really good here. Novice Inspector, just an all around good value card. Also combos very well with Warden of the Inner Sky, which also does really well with the rest of the deck just because you've got a lot of tokens happening. So super happy with the one drops. I think this is pretty much where I wanna stay on the one drops. Having at least 12 one drops gives you a decent likelihood to be able to play something on turn one pretty reliably. If you were to make extra room, I mean, you could potentially bring in like a single ten of Skrelv. There just wasn't really room, but that's something you could possibly bring in. The reason that I cut it was that there aren't really that many creatures that are super important to protect. So, I mean, yeah, you kind of care about your Warden of the Inner Sky, your Sanguine Evangelists, and your Knight Errants, but it's not that big of a deal if you lose one, right? You've still got like Virtue of Loyalty as your end game. Um, you don't really care that much, so I think protecting creatures is a little bit less important. And even though you can use Skrelb to push through some damage, I think it's just not quite as good as some other stuff you wanna be doing here. Like, since this deck is not running Brutal Cathar, uh, since that rotated out, and we're not really humans per se, um, kind of moving away from that, sort of going more of a go wide. So in the two drops, we have the full play set of Case of Gateway Express. This card is phenomenal gives you both pump to all of your guys and removal in one card. So full play set definitely makes sense. This is also your only form of removal in the deck. So 
you got to make it stretch. And then you want to have at least, I'd say, you know, nine or ten other plays on turn two to do something if you don't have one of your one drops. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to get this Virtue of Loyalty in, since it gives you something to do on turn two. It makes a token, which combos with Season Warren Guard, and just all around helps the strategy. I feel like this is the perfect addition. So you've got full play set of that, which is really kind of in the two drop slot, four Resolute Reinforcements, uh, one Regal Bunnicorn, just because this is kind of the big payoff for all of the token nonsense that we're doing. So there's sort of a you know push-pull of how many of these you want to run. We also don't have that much room, so I might run more of these if I had more room. One seems like a fine place to be right now. You know, usually you can play this as like a 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven on like turns 3 or 4. So it's it's very it's very good. Um, three drops. We have Hop to It. This card is absolutely amazing. Making three tokens for three mana is just incredible value. Um, Sanguine Evangelist also just a phenomenal card. The fact that it replaces itself gives you essentially a 3-for-1 and pumps your team. And then you've got Knight Aaron of Eos, which just combos with everything. Is usually a three for one, and we have a decent chance of finding stuff since we do have uh, 25 creatures. So, you know, not quite as heavy as some of the other builds since we do have like Hop to it is not actually a creature. Um, same with Virtue of Loyalty, so it doesn't hit quite as often. But even getting one, one creature off this card is still great value. So, yeah, I feel like you definitely want the full play set. And uh, that's the deck. So those are the updates. Just recently hit, I think, gold tier one. I've only been two days back, so had to kind of start from silver. And uh, yeah, let's hop into some games. Definitely had a little bit of rustiness the other day to sort of getting back into it. Haven't taken a decent amount of time off in the summer. But uh, yeah, no, I, I really like this deck. It's... A lot of fun and uh, you don't have a whole lot of interaction but eh, it's aggressive it's my strategy all right opening hand looks great got stuff to do two mana um, I think if you have like a one lander in this deck you typically do want a mulligan since a lot of your like money cards are your three drops so pretty much always try to get at least two mana going in your opener if you can no one drop, unfortunately, but definitely happy with our twos and threes. All right, so yeah, we could use another mana for sure. With 23 sources, we have a decent chance of drawing into it. <clears throat> But yeah, up against Mono Red here, this Manifold Mouse can definitely be a problem. Okay, there's the land, happy to see it. So the question is if we wanna go Virtue or Reinforcements, we probably just wanna go Reinforcements here. Um, I guess unless they just like walk into the Virtue like tapped out or something crazy like that. But I'm gonna assume they're gonna hit us for a bunch of damage here. So yeah, probably go for reinforcements and then try to set up Knight Errant. It does make me wonder if they're holding up some kind of pump for the Manifold Mouse. I suppose it's possible. But yeah, we've got a really nice turn. Hop to it into Knight Errant feels pretty good. <clears throat> this way we can at least kill it next turn pretty reliably, unless they have like just like a straight up protection spell. Okay, so they saw our plan. They unfortunately shut down the Knight Errant here. Um, can we take another round of this nonsense? 
Yes, sort of, but like we don't want to lose our team. I think we just push here and just hope we don't take too much. That was a heads up play from them for sure, seeing that we had Knight Errant mana. Nice that they kind of whiffed there a little bit. I guess they can still play the Druid. <clears throat> But yeah, we're going to want to get this case going ASAP. So I suppose question here is if we want to try to go for like a triple block on the Swift Spear. I think there's a decent chance they have at least one spell on hand. Like it's not impossible that they don't. But that would leave us with only two creatures. And I guess we could still go for the Knight Errant. Take out their Swift Spear, drop to 10. So that's a possibility. Um, otherwise we can try to kill the mana pool now, so I think that's a little bit more important. So I think we just take it here, unfortunately. Drop down a little low. I don't know if that was right. So now... Now we can go Knight Errant. We're at 8, which is not fun. But uh, we can go Knight Errant and then still have enough for Case. I suppose we could also go Knight Errant plus Bunicorn. Try to set up the double block. But I think this is just too dangerous of a card. We have to get it off the table. So the other play... Hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably the play, honestly. I guess we can look and see what we pick up first. Yeah, th them taking a turn to slow us down on the Night Arm was super painful. All right, let's grab the two one drops here. Since we've already got some higher stuff, I just want to have access to be able to like double spell. And then let's just go ahead and take out their Manifold Mouse. Definitely, they definitely got us on the ropes here a little bit. But if we can get through this turn, maybe the next one. Okay, that was phenomenal top deck there. Wow. Could not be happier. Now we can kind of sit back a little bit. We can still, we can still go for the trigger in the case. We could also like case plus inspector here. Um, just get rid of the druid, probably. I suppose actually this challenger is also kind of annoying because it gives them extra cards. So maybe get rid of the challenger. Hmm. All right, well, let's inspect her either way. And then I think we can also, let's also go for another Knight Errant here. I feel like that's pretty good. Nice refill. We could also just play like the Bunicorn here and just set up like a big attack for next turn. We don't necessarily have to case right now. Maybe just dropping Bonicorn here feels pretty good. Nice 10-10. Ten, ten. And again, we're at eight. Like they could, I suppose, like get another creature going, push a little bit, but I think we can attack for four here. Still got two sizable blockers. Yeah, they're just gonna pack it in. Whew, that was close, but yeah, we turned it around. Heads up play from the opponent though, denying us the um, the Knight Errant a turn earlier. But 
But yeah, I'm loving how, how out of hand this deck can get. All right, opening hand looks great. Got mana to do stuff. No one drop, but I think that's okay. Okay, another mono red deck. So yeah, we probably just go reinforcements into Night Errant here. Hope they don't take too much damage on the back, on the back end here. I guess we could virtue here trade for it but i don't i mean then we take a bunch of damage yeah so let's just take the four be okay with it so i think we just want to get going here with our knight errant and we've got a really nice next turn set up because we can just go hop to it into knight errant just flood the board That feels really good. Nice pick up there. We're also getting kind of close to Virtue um, backside mana. Also, we've got Evangelist, so we can at least throw a blocker in the way for this slick shot. If they don't give it trample. Okay, I think we block here. Take nine, drop to seven. And I think we want to just start chumping this. Actually, we can't really chump it. Hmm. I suppose if they pump this, this can just potentially just outright kill us. We don't have a good blocker for Slickshot show off. I suppose we could case the Heartfire hero now. Problem is we can't case and also Evangelist. Hmm. Maybe we just set up blocks, hope they don't go to seven with it. Um, Oh, yeah. Although they can pump it a decent amount. Or just, like, hope they have nothing with a slick shot. That's pretty thin. Don't know the play. I think we just hope they don't have it. I don't know that we have a good answer to that, unfortunately. And then I think we get case going push. Do we want a knight errant again? I don't really think so. I think we just need to push damage here. So probably just like hold reinforcements or virtue. But yeah, if they've got anything like we're super dead, it's not ideal. Any pump spell or burn will just do it. OK. 
Okay, I guess we can go for Virtue here and just try to get in the way of the Challenger. Are they just like slow rolling it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they had it. This deck definitely does a lot better on the play than on the draw, as you would expect, having so little removal. But I think with the style of it, it's just not worth dedicating a lot more slots to that um, over cards that just help you build your board. Like, it's just, it's probably not going to be a deck that has like over, you know, a 60 to 70% win rate, but it's just, it's fun. You can get in there and smash them. So I wonder which version of Convoke this is. If it's just like the standard Boros Convoke. Uh, there have been like Jeskai versions running around that use like Siren um, to try to get a little bit better value over some of the other cards. Don't really see, yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious he's just trying to finesse a point of damage there. Eh, case for one, yeah. I suppose, yeah, yeah, case for one is a thing. Doesn't feel that bad, honestly, though. Maybe we get to eat a creature here, it'd be kind of fun. Yeah, maybe this is the Jeskai version. And we can see if we can resolve a hop to it. Jeskai runs any counters. I don't think they do. I think it's literally just for the Siren and maybe like Anchorage and whatnot. Okay, this must be a slightly different deck. <sighs> Did we just try to race it? I guess we can use Case on it next turn. Like Case plus Warden feels pretty good. So yeah, we'll just take it. And definitely case post-combat so we don't have to like deal with whatever this thing turns into. Could also just ignore it this turn. Um, we could like Warden plus hop to it, try to set up a little bit. I think case is just better though. All right, so let's attack first. And then let's just use Virtue here just to be mana efficient. Oh, never mind. Actually, we because of the, the land setup, we have to Warden instead. So yeah, I guess Fountain Port and Lupin, Flynn, Lupin Flower Village cannot cast Virtue. So maybe we need to go down to like two copies of Lupin Flower. I suppose if we're running like four copies of Virtue, having like these kind of draws are a little bit awkward. And like the benefit from Lupin Flower is pretty marginal.
Do we trade? Um, I don't think so. Like, the damage def definitely hurts, but with Warden and the potential of getting Virtue going. Although we could be taking a lot of damage in the air here very, very quickly. So I guess next turn, if we hop to it, we won't have enough to get Warden into the air just by a little bit unless we draw into something. So we drop to 11. Yeah, I think with Steel Seraph, we actually have to kind of respect this and double block here. I don't love it, but I think we need to. Just kind of slow the game down a little bit. Do we want Evangelist or hop to it here? Um, probably not walking into Steel Seraph, but I think maybe getting Evangelist going feels pretty good. Because then we can like, attack in next turn provided that they don't attack or whatever. And then, yeah, we hope we can draw some land into Virtue. Because, yeah, that Steel Seraph just represents, like, so much potential damage here. Just kind of slowing the game down feels pretty good. was not what I was looking for, unfortunately. I think we just push here. Just like full push. Because then we've got the buff from Evangelist. We're sending for 15. Can they swing back and kill us? I guess we could play Evangelist, have like one blocker block here. They're pushing four, six... Yeah, I think we can full send and we don't need to hold the other bat back. I guess if they have removal for the bat off the evangelist, or if they get like an anchorage going and full send, they're pushing three, five, seven, nine. Yeah, they could kill us, but that's only the, since they like they they'd have to have. Um, the removal also and they can't do that and anchorage unless they have like a one one mana like a bounce or something um i should have played this after combat but i just was kind of running out of time so i think we just full push here <laughs> so that's a little bit sloppy but just didn't want to get timed out But there's like a decent chance and if they don't have like super cheap um, bounce that we live through next turn. And we've got a pretty nice setup here.
I'm guessing they just push for life gain here. Oh, vigilance, interesting. Okay, so they want to get case going. Makes sense. Do we block here and trade? I guess they'll have potentially two blockers up maybe with nonsense backup. If they have like that plus a forest dispersal, that's like basically three blockers. Block, block, block. We'd be pushing four, eight. I think they're still dead. So I think we just take it. Yeah, I think we actually have them here. Yep. Nice. Anyways, yeah, just a couple quick games. Really loving the deck. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Again, if you did like this, consider subscribing if you're not subscribed. Um, here's the deck again, and we will see you in the next one. You guys are awesome. Also, here's a quick uh, recap of where we're at on the um, how the deck's doing. Currently at 64% win rate, 80% win rate on the play, 56% on the draw, 18 wins and 10 losses. So just starting to build up some of these different matchups. It'll become a little bit clearer as uh, I do more reps. So again, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.